Even though everyone was rushing around, Katie still had time to discover that if you don't put your bracelet back where it belongs, it won't be there when you need it again. Orby found out that not finishing your breakfast left your tummy hungry before lunchtime. And they both discovered that it's faster to slow down when you're getting ready than to race around in circles. When Katie opened the front door, Dakota threw open his arms and said, it's time for the powwow. <coughs> Katie and Orby didn't need to hear any more. They shot right out the door, leaving Dad behind to lock up. Fred, Dakota's dad, was taking them to a native powwow. Dad was excited, too. He hadn't been to one since he was a young boy. Dakota explained that a powwow was a place to meet old friends and to make new ones. <coughs> Katie and Orby both loved to make new friends, so they were happy to be invited. They drove out into the country. Orby thought that maybe the powwow would take place downtown, but Dakota giggled when he said that. Native people like to have their powwows out in the middle of nature. They like trees and fields, Dakota explained. Orby smiled because he did too. Dakota pointed to a hill. We're here, he said. Katie couldn't see anything but grass and field, and, well, she was starting to think that maybe nothing very much happened at a powwow. But Dakota, who was watching very carefully for things to show his friends, pointed to a man who was walking through the parking lot. He had all kinds of feathers on. Katie loved his outfit, and so did Orby, because he tooted. Dakota smiled a big smile. As soon as they were out of the car, Dakota grabbed Katie and Orby by the hand. Come on, we have to find the circle. Katie ran with Dakota, wondering what kind of circle they had to find. Then Orby, who heard it first, stopped in his tracks. Dakota tried to yank him further, but Orby needed to listen. He orbled Dakota, asking what that strange noise was. Well, Dakota couldn't control himself anymore. He jumped up and down and told Katie and Orby, it's the drums, the drums, hurry up. That was all they had to hear. There was a circle and drum, so already this was going to be a lot of fun. Fred and Dad came up behind them and bought the tickets. Once they were through the gates, they saw the big circle. Katie noticed that all kinds of people were wearing feathers and beautiful beaded dresses and shawls and she could barely take in everything. This was exciting. Dakota found them all a nice long bench where they could sit down together. Fred explained that the MC who was making all the announcements was a very important person because he kept the powwow moving. He was the person who invited the dancers to come up and dance. The MC announced that the next dance would be the fancy dress dance. Katie and Orby waited. Dakota told them they were going to love this one. He was right, of course, because all of a sudden the circle started to fill with men all dressed in magnificent feathers. They had feathers on their heads. They had feathers around their necks. They had feathers around their waists. The men hopped and turned and danced right around the big circle. That was when Orby spied them. The drums were in the middle of the circle. He clapped his hands. Katie could hear some singing, too, but she couldn't understand the words. Dakota smiled. Native people have their own languages. I'm just learning mine. I know the word for friends. It's niche kewan. Katie repeated it. She liked Dakota's language and wondered if he would teach her his language, too. Dakota smiled. He was very proud to be native and glad to teach his friends about his heritage. There were several different dances, and the three friends loved watching them. Then the MC announced that it was time for the jingle dress dance. Just as Katie was about to ask what a jingle dress was, she heard a lovely tinkling jingle sound behind her. A very beautiful girl with silver cones on her dress was heading into the circle. Katie just couldn't believe it. Soon other girls with little silver cones on their dresses joined the first. And when the drums began, the wonderful jingles played a song of their own, and the girls danced around. Katie loved the sound, and so did Orby. He was tapping his toes.
soon it was time for a snack. The snack would be different. It would be native food. Everybody tried some sugar banak. Orby didn't like it too much. He was very polite and didn't say anything. Katie thought it was good. Dakota, who had eaten it many times before, loved it and had two helpings. Just as they were finishing up, the MC announced that it was time for the intertribal dance. Fred thought that they should see it because everybody who had danced at the powwow was going to dance again. Back on the bench, Katie, Orby, and Dakota all tapped their feet as the dancers moved through the circle. When the dances were finished, the MC told the audience that because a powwow was meant not only for old friends, but for new friends too, he was inviting everybody into the circle. The drum started to beat as people moved off the benches. Dakota was the first one down into the circle, and he showed Katie and Orby how to do the steps his father had taught him. At first, Katie and Orby kind of jumped and bumped, and then all of a sudden, they were doing the dance. Maybe not as well as the dancers, but well enough. Fred was trying to show Dad, who kept saying he was hopeless at it. But soon enough, even Dad was dancing. <laughs> at the end of the dance, it was time to go home. Dad told the friends that because it was such a special day, he would allow them each to buy something to take home as a souvenir. Katie chose a string of jingles to make wonderful music when she danced. Orby chose a small drum like the ones that the drummers had played. And Dakota chose bright colored beads to wear around his neck. Dad invited Fred and Dakota to stay for supper. As they walked up to the front door, Dad told Fred he was sorry the powwow was over. Fred grinned and pointed over Dad's shoulder. It isn't as over as you think, he said. There was Orby sitting on the ground, playing the drum. Katie and Dakota danced in circles around him. And do you know, that mini powwow went right on until supper time, which was the perfect time to stop because the drummer and the dancers were getting very hungry, as you can imagine.